Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Madam Clerk, uh, I understand we have some regrets this evening. Yes, we have regrets from Councillors Chisholm, Lischina, and Robinson. Well, the rest of us will have to uh, carry the weight. Uh, Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, there are none. Council, uh, we need a mover and seconder to resolve in the Committee of the Whole. Councilor Lapworth and Councilor O'Meara, all those in favor? Opposed to Finney? Thank you. We have no consent items and no, and that includes confidential, but we do have uh, public hearing items. And number one is the public meeting report on a zoning bylaw amendment uh, request by Oakville Urban Core Developments. And tonight, we will not be making a decision on this application, but we will be receiving the comments of the public. And Council, you've got some late breaking comments on your desks. And if we give our attention to Ms. Collingwood, she can outline this application for the benefit of those at home and those in the audience who may not be familiar with it. Thank you, Mayor Burton. The purpose of this report is to present the zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by Oakville Urban Core Developments for 1005 Dundas Street and 3033 8th Line in conjunction with the required statutory public meeting. As noted by, by my report, there are no decisions to be made tonight at this time and the staff report is to be received by council. The subject, uh, the subject lands are located at 1005 Dundas Street, 3033 8th Line, at the northeast corner of Dundas Street and 8th Line, as shown on this uh, slide. The property located at 1005 Dundas Street eight, uh, East is vacant, while there is a detached residential dwelling on the property on 8th Line. The subject site is approximately 1.09 hectares and has frontage on Dundas Street as well as 8th Line. The surrounding context includes the Shield Bay development, as I've shown on this slide and was shown in the report. Um, the subdivision was recently registered, and I believe construction is on its un underway up there. This uh, subdivision consists of 518 residential dwellings, as well as two urban core uh, mixed-use blocks along Dundas Street. Um, and you can see how the blo those blocks line up with this development right here. The lands to the north and the east are vacant, and the lands to the south consist of a residential subdivision as well as commercial uses. The applicant seeks an amendment to the North Oakville zoning bylaw to permit the lands to be developed for an eight-story residential building containing 255 units as well as 20 three-story townhouse dwellings. Parking is proposed to have the parking that is proposed is 345 underground spaces on one underground parking level, as well as 40 surface parking spaces. The North Oakville East Secondary Plan designates the southern part of the subject uh, property as Dundas Urban Core and the northerly portion as Neighborhood Center Area. Dundas Street East is identified as a major arterial transit corridor um, and bus corridor. Eighth Line is designated as a connector transit corridor. The Dundas Urban Core designation permits a variety of uses and has a maximum of eight story height, height limit. The intent of the neighborhood area is for residential neighborhoods to be developed with a mix of uses, with a central neighborhood activity node within a five minute walk for most residences, including public facilities, live work units, and limited commercial uses. The North Oakville East, or sorry, the North Oakville Master Plan illustrates the conceptual design for the North Oakville East planning area, and development applications are reviewed in the context of the master plan in order to ensure the coordination of adjacent developments. The applicant has developed a concept that is coordinated with the road network of the North Oakville <coughs> secondary plan as approved and has compatible uses to the townhouses and mixed-use developments approved by the approved in the Shield Bay development to the west. The subject property is currently zoned existing development and like most lands within North Oakville, a zoning bylaw amendment is necessary to implement the proposal. 
A site-specific bylaw would implement the secondary plan and establish regulations uh, intended to permit the development of the mid-rise residential building and townhouse proposal to proceed. The following matters have been identified for consideration as part of the complete analysis of the application that is underway and has been gathered also from the public information meeting that was held on January 10th. The matters that we're looking at are confirming the membership of the, uh, of the applicant with the North Oakville Developers Group, conformity with the North Oakville East Secondary Plan, the housing mix, proposed built form and densities with the, within the neighborhood center and Dundas Urban Core areas, Transportation impacts of eighth lines of, of the eighth line south of the residence, eighth line south of Dundas. Um, also, overlook and privacy concerns we're taking a look at for the residents that are on the south side of Dundas Street. Next steps include review, uh, further review and analysis of the technical matters. A couple technical review meetings will be scheduled and uh, consult, consultation with the reviewing um, agencies. In conclusion, staff put forward the following recommendation as shown for Council's consideration that comments from the public with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment application by Oakville Urban Core Developments be received. And I have added the following recommendation to my report that notice of Council's decision reflect that any comments received from the public will be appropriately addressed. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, do you have questions? Councillor Adams? Thank you very much for the presentation. I appreciate the, the work you've put into this and at the public information meeting and so on. Uh, just a couple of questions for you. Would you flip back a page in your slide deck to the issues that you've got listed? Uh, there's a couple of issues that are coming up regularly in the comments from the public, particularly those who are on the south side of Dundas Street. And they relate heavily to the issues of shadow, uh, privacy, and overlook. How are we going to review those particular issues? under against what tests are they being tested through you mr mayor we have taken a look at the shadow study and um, there is a need to uh, Im improve um, some of the analysis that was done so that it would takes a better look at what those shadow impacts are we are asking that the applicant undertake that work and we are going to then schedule a technical meeting with the consultants as well as the residents that are concerned about those issues um, and staff and sit down and try and sort of go through the recommendations of the consultants and then mitigate what we can of the uh, the impacts to their backyards. Okay, and what time frame would we look for for that? I actually just spoke with um, some of the res uh, one of the residents today, and we were looking at um, if we can't do it by the end of February, it'll be early March. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, the other question I have for you is with respect to the notification of uh, the residents who are in the area and most of the residents are on the south side of Dundas at the, at the moment. What kind of notification have they received, and in particular, what kind of notification have they received with respect to what the allowances are within the Dundas Urban Core designation, and, and in particular, the uh, height allowances that are part of that designation? Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the typical notices that have gone out for the public information meeting, as well as tonight's public meeting, do not contain any information about the rights to development um, that are included under the Dundas Urban Core or the uh, Neighborhood Center. So they, the notices typically speak to what the proposal is and what the changes could affect um, with the zoning bylaw change. It is at the time of the public meeting or the public information meeting where we communicated to the residents that uh, there was an eight-story height limit that was permitted, and um, the applicant had the as of right uh, to build to that that height. Okay, thank you for that. Um, is there a better process that we could be using to uh, help help those who are on the south side of Dundas, and not only in this particular site, but because that Dundas Urban Core designation goes all the way along Dundas? we could see this kind of development in a number of different locations along Dundas, and I think that perhaps this is the, the first of more to come, and I think that all of us around the council on the north side anyway uh, might want to take some awareness around the lack of understanding of what the designations allow on the north side of Dundas and look for ways to better communicate what's to come. 
Through you, Mr. Mayor, we do have, I mean, obviously the regulations, the policies, all the plans, everything is on the website, and I do understand that that is sometimes difficult to navigate for residents that aren't really um, knowing where to go, for lack of better words, um, to get that sort of information. Um, I think that it is something in the planning department that is a concern that we have been talking about is how to how to communicate with residents um, on this level and uh, that is an ongoing conversation. Thank you very much. I look forward to the information from the residents. Uh, thank you very much. I just have a quick process question actually. I, I noticed that it said in the report that the water and wastewater servicing is not available and the next allocation prog uh, programs intended to commence in 2018 and I know that there's been a, a fair amount of saber rattling uh, lately uh, at the region in terms of allocation. So what happens to a um, um, to this project if the, the region delays allocation? <coughs> We have um, we have a zoning bylaw amendment in front of us. So the zoning bylaw, they can the region could put a hold on the bylaw that um, the bylaw can be passed. It just won't be in force in effect until the allocation is uh, is there for them. So then it would move to the region, and then the region would hold until it decides on its allocation to get the water and wastewater. Then is that how that works? The region puts a, oh, through you, Mr. Mayor. The region puts places a hold on the bylaw that we take um, carriage of and then um, when the time comes that the application or the allocation is available and the region has notified the applicant the applicant then applies to the town to lift the hold the applic or the region then lets the town know that they are uh, satisfied with the condition being lifted excellent thank you very much anyone else uh, mr. planning director uh, your, through your worship to Councillor Adams, I just wanted to follow up on, uh, Councillor, your comment about a better process to inform residents. Um, I know you're aware that we're working on the uh, Livable Oakville review, where, wherein we're going to be combining the North Oakville piece with that, and with your comments in mind, we can look at a process to, through that lens to allow for that uh, dialogue to occur. Well, Mr. Planning Director, would that include providing more information in the public notice? Uh, through to to uh, your worship, the, the notice we put out is in accordance with the regulations of the Planning Act, which is a minimum. So we can have a look at what, in addition to that, that we can supplement uh, based on the comments we've heard here today. I can assure you, this council's always been willing to do more than the minimum when it comes to notifying the public. Uh, yes, yes, I'm aware of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Are are there uh, members of the public, uh, uh, Madam Clerk? Are there registered delegations for this? Yes, we do have one registered delegation. Uh, Gersh Durhan, sorry if I pronounced that incorrectly, speaking to this item. Mr. Durhan, please come forward and uh, share your information with Council here at the Centre. And uh, if you're about nine or ten inches away from the microphone tip, we'll be able, we'll, not only will we be able to hear you, but the people at home will be too. <laughs> Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, um, council members, thank you for your time. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is about the, uh, just now what uh, Ms. Tricia was talking about, the zoning bylaw amendment. And I just wanted to uh, put uh, the perspective from a uh, public point of view. Uh, I am living in the first house on the south side of this development and if i if if i measure it the the length of this development along the danda street i am almost two third of my house length the corner one is covered by this so first and foremost um, i i'm uh, i i was really concerned because as you rightly mentioned that there was uh, no such notice uh, we ever found, uh, except the one which dropped in in December about this first meeting. And that's the time I went on uh, site and studied about this whole thing. Uh, what concerns me most is that uh, if I see the, the um, uh, uh, there is a Oakville uh, planning document uh, whose link I have sent to Ms. Tricia, and that 
very clearly says that uh, existing character of the neighborhood should be maintained. So I do not understand uh, that uh, just because there is a Danda Street in between, how the, like you are telling by this planning perspective that people on north of Dundas have nothing to do with people on south of Dundas, and that is not a neighborhood, because if that is a neighborhood, then how come the character has changed so much? Now, uh, last meeting, uh, Mr. Mayor was uh, uh, kind enough to spend some time with us, and you made some, a few remarks, and that was about uh, 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 on uh, our provincial government uh, pro uh, enforcing us to go um, mid or high density or uh, that way. But the fact is that if we are going in that direction, planning is one perspective, and I definitely uh, agree. And I, I am pro-development, I'm not against it. But we should have created a sample, a pilot project, and see what is the public response to such kind of structures which are created. Because being in Oakville, number one, the price of these kind of structures is high. The lack of enough uh, employment opportunities around Oakville, so people have to go either to Mississauga, Toronto, and surrounding areas. This proper, these opportunities being less, one and two bedroom craze is not that heavy until unless it is a walking distance from go station or such facilities. This building has none of those features. If there was a pilot done, where is the proof that this pilot was successful? What I can see in the Joshua Creek on the south side, Prince Michael and Dundas. And there, when you see, I think that building is still not fully occupied and that is a two and three bedroom structure. Putting one bedroom apartments, and there are a lot of them in this particular building proposal, I do not understand what kind of family culture we are trying to build with one bedroom apartment. Uh, I heard Ms. Trisha saying that uh, it is five minutes away from public facilities. As far as I know, I lived in this place, in this house for last seven years, more than seven years, except a bus stop. There is nothing at five minutes distance. <laughs> and there you have bus number 24 running. Very, very rarely it shows up. It runs, it is doing its job. I'm not saying that, but there's no demand that much. So uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty confused that is it a development we are looking at, or is it because this builder or developer has this piece of land and wants to optimize maximum benefit out of it by creating one bedroom, two bedroom, and not other thing, and few townhouses. So then comes the part that we are, this development has happened, and no new development can be done or should be done without taking into consideration the existing surrounding neighborhood. And as uh, Councillor Adams mentioned, that uh, this is going to be a start, and you are going to have this situation again and again. So privacy is a big concern. This building standing there is completely overlooking the backside of Chaplin Road houses, half of which have the swimming pool. And then shadow is another concern. I asked Ms. Tricia to provide this 31 meter structure shadow calculation, how it has been done. Because when I went online, I tried to do this calculation. It was not agreeing to what figures have been supplied by the builder. So I want to know that basis. So there is a technical meeting review, which I think will help us. Overall, I, I, I feel that when we grow in our life, we, we become, we feel better, then we come to Oakville because we think that it is a place to live. And we have a beautiful quote, make it the most livable town. But the fact is that, and I, 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 I love, I don't want to leave this town, I love this town, it is a very well-managed town, but 
this kind of things which are not satisfactorily agreeing to our comfort, giving us uh, a feeling that our privacy is going to be compromised. Uh, we are not going to have adequate measures. By planting few trees, you cannot say we have taken care of this issue. And above all, this structure has been proposed, definitely, but is it going to be approved by virtue of some reasons or just because Ms. province tells us? Because this town is our family, our home. We live here. We, we, it is part of our life. We cannot uh, let province decide alone. Because if that would have been the case, I would have not been attending that Queen's Park rally for PowerPoint, power plant, which you addressed. And I was there that day, if you remember, Mr. Mayor. So the point here is that we cannot let province decide what is right. They propose, but ultimately, the residents here have to feel happy, and they have to feel that they are safe here. And I think that is something which you will look into. So that's my humble request. I hope uh, you will consider it. I, have, I also want to submit a petition of 11 <coughs> residents in the area. And if given time, unfortunately, it was cold winter, winter day, I ventured out. And every one of them signed on this petition. And I can get an absolute, complete neighborhood signature, because I didn't find a single person saying that I am not I, I'm okay with it. They felt uncomfortable with this proposal. Thank you, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Dury, for your information. Councillor Elgar. I appreciate uh, where the individual is coming from. I wonder, can staff explain the zoning and what is as of right? Because I, I, I think we ought to got to be honest with the residents and you know the 11 people that signed up. What does that mean, and what should they know when, the, when it's already zoned for eight stories? Through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the official plan um, sets a height limit for the Dundas Urban Core blocks, and it's up to eight, ma eight stories maximum along Dundas Core. Hold on, let me just get that up here. You can see the different colors in this slide. Um, so the darker color is the eight-story maximum as spelled out in the Dundas Urban Core in the official plan. The lighter color is the neighborhood center area, which has a height limit of two to five stories, um, also spelled out in the, and it's, they're also in the design guidelines for North Oakville that spell out the type of form that we're looking for in those blocks, or in those, those uh, designations. Okay, so I appreciate that. So, I, I, like, in our, I just want to be fairer that, in, in fact, the developer in this case can build eight stories as of right. Completely. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor. Are there other delegations, Madam Clerk? That is the only listed delegation we have. Are there other members of the public here tonight with information for Council on this file? Thank you. I will uh, <coughs> look for a motion to receive. Councillor Adams? So, Councillor Adams, are you can moving that comments from the public with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment application by Oakville Urban Core Developments be received and that notice of council's decision reflect that any comments received from the public will be appropriately addressed? Yes, I will. I have a question for our staff, though, if I may, before we move on. Um, just a question about the landscaping that was brought forward, and it, and it does have a little bit to do with the privacy and overlook issue as well. When I look at the uh, proposed or conceptual site plan, I think I, I see four trees being planted along the Dundas Street frontage, and I wonder if we can discuss uh, whether or not that's considered adequate landscaping, and if it's meant to be part of the uh, privacy protection, whether it provides adequate privacy protection. That is something that I have asked for a more detailed review of as we sit, so that when we sit down with the um, applicant, the consulting team and the residents, we can uh, adequately address that. I don't want to speak to whether it's appropriate or not. Um, I have had comments from the urban forestry 
forester that has um, weighed in on the idea of street trees along uh, along Dundas um, along Dundas Street, but we haven't looked at the full uh, depth of the amount of landscaping as well. I don't know what type of trees they would be. I, I don't have that information right now, but that is something we're going to have for the meeting. Okay, so it will yes. be addressed in the yes. in the report yes. that does come back and through the process that we're going to go through and review. Yeah, it. we have that list of uh, items that need to be addressed in that meeting, and we will make sure that everyone's in the room to do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And with that, I'm happy to move the two uh, components of the receipt. Shall I put the vote? All those in favor? Opposed to any? Carried. That brings us to item number two, the public meeting report for the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for CapReit Limited Partnership. Um, now this, unlike the previous item, is an actual, um, no, this is just like the other item. This is a, a public meeting report where the comments are collected from the public and a decision is not yet made. The decision is for a later meeting. And uh, we get to turn to Trish again for this one. Thank you, Mr. Burton, or Mayor Burton. The purpose of this report is to present the zoning bylaw, or sorry, the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by Capriot Limited Partnership in conjunction with the required statutory public meeting. As noted by my report, there are no decisions to be made at this time, and the staff report is to be received by council. The subject lands are located just north of here at 1360 White Oaks Boulevard and 1289 Marlboro Court. The subject site is approximately 3.2 hectares in size and is bounded by Marlboro Court to the south, Trafalgar Road to the west, White Oaks Boulevard to the east, detached dwellings about the site to the north. To the east is a 21-story residential apartment building. There is also a six-story residential apartment building to the south, and the Sheridan campus is located to the west of the site. The site contains two 18-story rental apartment buildings, which are 1360 uh, White Oaks Boulevard and 1297 Marlboro Court, and a commercial plaza, which has an address for 1289 Marlboro Court. The site plan has a different orientation. Trafalgar's at the bottom of the slide. The existing site includes 266 residential apartment units within the two towers, as well as the commercial component that's located at 1289 Marlboro Court with 14 commercial tenants. The majority of the uses front onto Trafalgar Road, three units uh, front onto Marlboro Court, and two are internal to the site. There is a Montessori school located at the base of 1360 White Oaks Boulevard, and the applicant is seeking an amendment to the livable Oakville official plan and the zoning bylaw to add a sports facility as a use within the building at 1360 White Oaks to permit the conversion of the residential amenity space to add a fitness center. The subject lands are dual designated, a neighborhood commercial and high density residential in the livable Oakville plan. The portion of the lands fronting onto Trafalgar Road are designated neighborhood commercial the balance of the lands are designated high density residential. The high density residential land use designation does not contemplate commercial units, sorry, commercial uses. The proposals consider development due to the proposed change in land use to add commercial use permissions in a, in a residential designation. The proposals considered intensification due to the conversion of an existing amenity area within an existing residential building to a commercial use. Added intensification within residential neighborhoods may take place if it's determined the lands are underutilized. Intensification of residential areas is typically in the form of increasing density permissions, not in increasing the types of uses that we permit. The Trafalgar Road Corridor Planning Study was completed in 2014, I believe. It was, it's, Sorry, the planning corridor study set up a policy, a special policy area with policies for lands within the designated corridor area. And you can see on this slide, it's within the gold dash line that runs along Trafalgar Road. The entirety of the subject property, including the high density residential lands identified outside the, that are identified outside the Trafalgar Road study area. So if you look at where the black star is, the pink is the commercial, 
whereas the darker orange color is the high density residential. So the pink was considered within the Trafalgar Road Corridor study, whereas the high density residential was not looked at. However, the site is, as a whole is considered within the study area. When looking at the assessment of redevelopment opportunities, only the surface parking lot and the one-story commercial units fronting Trafalgar were considered in the analysis of the corridor study. The intent of the special area policies is to maintain the commercial uses along Trafalgar Road and recognize the residential, the residential nature of the apartment buildings along White Oaks. The policies speak to intensification for residential uses um, and do not contemplate the commercial uses within the high density residential designation. There is currently split zoning as well, which applies to the subject lands. The westerly portion of the site is zoned C186 and the easterly portion is zoned RH, which is residential. So we've got commercial and residential high um, split zoning on this property. The special, <coughs> excuse me, the special provision permits the underground parking garage to cross zoning lines and permits parking spaces for all of the uses throughout the garage, as well as has permissions for outdoor play equipment and accessory structures being permitted in the northern yard. The proposed site-specific official plan amendment would request the inclusion of a sports facility, which is considered a commercial use, within the portion of the property designated high-density residential. The applicant is also requesting a zoning bylaw amendment that would establish regulations intended to control the scale and location of the proposed commercial use. A detailed planning review of the merits of the proposed policy and regulation modifications will be provided as part of the future recommendation report. Matters to be considered on this application um, include the conformity with section 1118, 1119, and uh, 263 of Livable Oakville's general intent for the subject areas, and I'm going to speak about those in just a second. It looks at the <coughs> compatibility, we're looking at the compatibility of a commercial use within the residential building, the concern of the residents um, that were brought up at the public information meeting, as well as emails that have come in for a commercial use that may set a precedent in their neighborhood. The question of whether the lands should be considered under, underutilized and appropriate for intensification. The impacts to the residents that I was just speaking of that include garbage, noise, traffic, and parking, and the ability to regulate the hours of right operation of a fitness facility. Section 11 of Livable Oakville contains objectives and policies that speak to the importance of compatibility within the stable residential neighborhoods such as maintaining, protecting, and enhancing the character, uh, looking at intensification and what intensification means. And as I said earlier, it's typically meant at looking at the uh, increased density of residential uses, not including commercial. It also looks at built form, height, and massing, but it, the overall look and compatibility of the use is not considered under um, section, section 11 because it's not considered the type of intensification that we would consider in a residential neighborhood. Next steps include further, uh, include further review and analysis as well as consultation with reviewing agencies. In conclusion, staff, staff put forward the following recommendation as shown for Council's consideration that comments from the public with respect to the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application by, applications by Capriot be received. I've also added that the notice of Council's decision reflect that any comments received from the public will be appropriately addressed. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Trish. Uh, Councillor Adams. Can I get you to flip back to the set of issues that are going to be reviewed, please? I think you've got 360 White Oaks. I, I wonder if that's meant to be 1360. It is. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. <laughs> that's just a typo. I just want to make sure that those in attendance aren't wondering, because the same typo appears in the uh, report itself on that uh, is a typo, and it's, it's for 1360 as well as the other the other apartment okay. buildings in the area and for so, all the residents. So there were concerns brought for, uh, by residents on the other side of the street as well at 1359 and yes. the adjacent. So I presume that both are uh, being addressed. Yes. Okay. And uh, I understand that there is some additional parking review being done. Can you highlight that? There is. So the parking study that was completed um, as part of the submission application looked at parking counts over the summer. 
So our transportation engineer here on staff asked for those parking counts to be redone throughout the fall or during the fall. And that work, I believe, has come in and is being reviewed. So we have a better idea of what those counts were. This, it was felt that the summer, and especially one of the weekends it was considered was a holiday weekend, those counts weren't appropriate for um, assessing the true impact of the site or true nature of the parking on the site as it is now. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, you've already listed here the issues of conformity and whether it's an appropriate um, uh, use in the residential area. So I look forward to that review happening uh, in its completeness. And I look forward to the further comments from the public tonight. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Giddings? Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm curious, it looks like this came to the Committee of Adjustment last year. Could you just describe that process and what occurred there? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the applicant was was hoping, was uh, anticipating being able to uh, receive permission to put the use in of the fitness center into the existing apartment building through a committee of adjustment variance. Uh, we typically do not permit those type of use um, variances and therefore it was denied and the appropriate application is before you now. Thank you. Are there any members of the public registered to delegate on this, Madam Clerk? Our first delegation on this matter is Nicholas Dell from Capreet Limited Partnership. Welcome, Mr. Dell. We look forward to your information. Thank you, Mr. Marion. I must say that I was uh, thrilled to hear that you might be deciding on this matter tonight and dismayed to hear that that was a mistake. Uh, I'm here in the capacity to uh, represent my client from the private sector and, of course, to acknowledge and thank staff uh, without prejudice for uh, bridging the gap between the public discourse and private discourse with respect to development and sustainable development in this, in this particular part of the city. And Councilor Adams has also been exemplary in um, creating discourse between the community and ourselves. And finally, there's been a gap bridged between how the community can respond to the manager of the property instead of through the town and over their head. You know, I'd like to first point out two things uh, in terms of inconsistencies of what I heard. <coughs> Excuse me, with respect to Councilor Giddings' uh, request for the minutes from the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, it is my opinion that um, when we first reached out to staff uh, on April 12th, 2016, we asked for a list of OP and rezoning submission requirements and we received no response. We submitted a Committee of Adjustment application for a temporary period of one year so that business could continue and the lease that we've intended for the women's only gym in the existing amenities area could begin their business. Uh, since then, uh, we uh, got a pre-consultation meeting request on June 8th. We didn't get a meeting until uh, July 13th, and uh, we clarified uh, what the submission requirements would be uh, on August 28th, and went ahead and submitted without a response to that effect again on August 31st. We got a notice of incomplete application on August 13th, and finally on September 28th, uh, we got a notice of complete application. Uh, so that means that on April 12th, all the way to September 28th, we didn't have much cooperation from staff in the way of getting a complete application in front of them, which is why we went forward with the Committee of Adjustment in the meantime to get some traction on our clients for our clients' benefit. Um, I'm just here to note some of the inconsistencies with respect to the procedure and the service of uh, Liverpool Oakville. We've been, uh, and I'd like to serve notice now again that we've been well, meaning Mr. to participate. Dell, if you would... Um Point the microphone towards yourself or yourself towards the microphone. Pardon me. Everybody would be better able to hear whatever it is you're giving us notice on. Uh, with respect, Mr. Chair, should I start over? Yes, and I just want to, without prejudice, name the facts without any colored opinion of my own. Um, in terms of dates of times we reached out to city staff and uh, lack of response, response thereof that left something to be desired in terms of getting a complete application on the table. Uh, there was a first pre-consultation meeting in September 28th of 2015, and it wasn't until September 28th of 2016 that we finally got a complete application going forward. And I want to recognize uh, for the lay people as well as my client's sake that under the Planning Act there is a four-month period um, of which you may appeal. And we don't want to go to the board, frankly. Uh, we think we want to work with Livable Oakville. Um, and we've made, uh, we served notice to that effect. However, staff were reluctant to accept our application um, with Livable Oakville being conducted in the meantime. And um, 
we still don't have a complete SAP report, and it's been about 4.5 months after we submitted a complete application. Uh, and I wanted to make that clear for my client's sake, that we, we urge you that this process could be done more expeditiously. It's an existing space, and we're opening up as an, uh, a gym for women's only uh, to service the uh, university across the street. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions further in that regard, but I wanted to make a few things clear in terms of timelines and hurdles we've had to overcome. Thank you very much for the clarity you've brought. Are there any questions for the gentleman? Councillor Adams. I note that you've uh, undertaken some work already in the, uh, the building itself on the interior. Uh, what plan would you have for that space if you weren't provided with the permissions that you're seeking? Through you, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, the permit that's currently in place is to fill in the pool, which we've got a permit for. And um, if this is not a supportable application, uh, with what I can say for my client's sake is that we are permitted to construct a larger residential high-rise in this, in this space of this building. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, sir, for your information. Thank you. Is there another delegation? Call away. Our next delegation is Greg Dell from Capriot Limited Partnership. Same name. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm quite proud of my son, and uh, he hasn't been doing this uh, for more than three or four years, but um, I'm, I'm glad to watch him uh, struggle through, as we all do when we grow through the planning process. Well, he, he, I thought he did a fine job, and uh, he has a deeper voice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, he's uh, been good at it, and he had uh, a great education, and, and uh, I'm proud of him. Um, Mr. Chairman and members, uh, I'm here to clarify the report and add some substance to it. Um, we were engaged by Caprit uh, a number of, uh, many months ago, to uh, deal with a tenant lease uh, on a long-term basis for this uh, type of facility, and very similar to other ones that we've done in, uh, in, uh, in the City of Toronto, in utilizing the space in a more effective and efficient way. Um, part of this application before you is going to have a benefit, certainly in, in many ways, to the town. Uh, there's going to be over a $400,000 development charge should this be approved and, and go forward. And it's going to create jobs for staff and staffing for this. And I think it's a, a good fit, to be honest with you. The actual application is to convert the existing amenity space. And the amenity space, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Mayor, was a fitness gym with locker rooms, showers, bathrooms, an office, and a squash court. And those were in operations on, uh, for many, many years and became unusable uh, in the last five to ten years because there was no interest in the students. Their interest uh, and some of the recreational s that this offered is better served over at uh, Sheridan College uh, in fashion that, that this was. So I just want to make it quite clear to you and staff that th this was a, a gym in its all its essence, in operating for the members of the residential two buildings. And the change that we have is to have a, a, a gym for uh, commercial uses for women's fitness only that would uh, occupy the identical same space without any change. Uh, there's no alteration to the building other than interior alterations. There's no outdoor activities planned with this. Um, it's quite a comprehensive, from our planning standpoint, uh, way of, of, of utilizing some empty space. The other option, is, as my son indicated, is we could convert this into residential apartments and increase that use in, the, in this building. And I don't think that's an, an, an interest that serves the community itself or serves that, the plaza and that group. Um, this is not making intensification inroads into, in my opinion, the community at all. It's, it's an existing commercial plaza with residential uh, apartments. Um, it has an existing commercial space now as a Montessori uh, school that's been operating over 10 years without any regard to any problems of parking or operationals. Uh, there's a barber shop and a hair salon already in that location too. That, in my opinion, it's legal long forming. So I don't think it's an extension of, of uh, of a commercial use in, this, in the true sense. It's really changing and recognizing the better opportunities for that use, and I think Oakville itself is, could be beneficial for it. Um, there's a couple of things in, there, uh, in our planning justification report that I think this council should hear, and um, it's our opinion that it represents efficient land use and infrastructure, appropriate form of adaptive re reuse, and it's consistent with the 2014 PPS. 
Um, and I'll just give you, we filed a very comprehensive uh, justification report that has a number of points. I'm just going to, in, in clarity, just re reflect on three only and, and hopefully answer any questions. Within intensific areas, areas including the Defrogger Road Corridor, the objectives of their OPA 38 are to provide a range of employment opportunities, facilities and services, and provide a diverse and complex mix of residential and employment uses to support the neighborhoods. We think this does that. The fitness club will provide a service to college students in the area as well as local residents, as well as employment opportunities. Within intensification corridors, an objective is to accommodate local services, including recreational, cultural, and entertainment uses. The fitness club will add to the range of the local service provided on these sublic lands. Currently, livable Oakville plan permits a number of community uses in the high-density residential land use designations, such as educational facilities, places of worship, senior centers, daycare centers, and art galleries. Amending the OP, in our opinion, to include a fitness club is in keeping with the overall intent of the official plan to permit service commercial uses on the ground floor and is similar to recently development mixed high density developments within ground retail service commercial uses. Um, so I just wanted to bring that uh, sort of highlight to you that's in our plan, uh, in our justification report. Um, we did extensive traffic reviews in this, and then we talked to the bylaw through the help of Councillor Adams to find out are there any parking issues in this community. We heard lots of them from the residents, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Mayor, I think you'll hear lots today. There's no evidence to provide uh, that we've been able to determine or find in the last six months of reviewing this, uh, this application uh, that would have any impact in parking. In, 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 in conclusion, we have surplus parking in, in the residential spaces, up to almost 200 spaces, and plenty of extra surplus parking with this use factored in in the, in the commercial zone. So there's no impact. Um, the Montessori schools existed 10 years. It's operational uh, is through the plaza itself. There's signage in the plaza. The kids come and go out of through that, and the parents park and pick up their children. Um, and that's my submission. I appreciate that the opportunity. Thank you very much for your information. Are there questions for the gentleman? Thank you, sir, for your time Thank and you. your information. Is there another delegation? Are there members of the public here tonight with additional information for council on this file? <coughs> Councillor Adams, what would you like us to do? I'll certainly move the uh, motion to receive the matter. I do have a question for our staff, though. It's been raised by the applicant that they could convert the space into additional residential units. Do they have that right? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, I didn't hear the last part. Do they have the right to transfer that space into additional residential units? I haven't. Right? I I have not um, looked at whether or not the number of units they would be able to get in and what that would do there to their density levels and parking. That hasn't been something that was raised as part of the application or reviewed. But could they convert that space into residential They could housing? convert that space, and we would review it to see if it fit into the density of that. And they would have to go through a, another, a different process to do that? They would. So it's not just as of right? Another review would have to take place. Correct. Thank you. Um, I think the, the matters that have been uh, raised by our staff um, are appropriate. They're catching all the various issues that have been caught at the public information meetings. There's a number of issues that were brought forward in the additional information that were that was handed out to um, council, and all of that will be responded to within the, the review process. Is that correct? What's the time frame for the review process for the members of the public here? We need to return, uh, we need to turn around and have the applicant address comments and resubmit. That could happen in the next couple of weeks if they're prepared to do so. Uh, I was waiting on the assessment of the, the parking utilization study to come in, and I'm hoping to have that any day now. As soon as that happens, I could get a full resubmission, and we could turn this around in another couple months for a recommendation. Okay, and those members of the public who are at the public information meeting or who have provided comments, they'll be notified of the, the next they, steps? They will. Okay, thank you. Trish, would you put your last slide up, please? All right, Council, this is the motion is moved by Councillor Adams. Shall I put the vote? All those in favor? Opposed if any, and that is carried. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Item number three. <coughs> Item number three. 
Mr. Barrett, we, uh, on behalf of the public, look forward to your summary of the uh, file that Council studied on this. I guess I should say this is the recommendation report for the draft plan of standard condominium for the Riverstone residences of Oakville. Your Worship, unless your there are members of the public or members of Council have questions, I'd be pleased to move it. Uh, thank you, Councillor Dunnick. Uh, I just wanted, I just thought for the benefit of the public who may be watching that if you're going to do that, we should at least explain that uh, an application for a draft plan of standard condominium is not a controversial or, or a significant uh, decision here. Which of you, can we let Mr. Barrett at least say that? Sure. Mr. Barrett. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Mayor. The, the application before Council today really addresses the tenure of the building which is under construction right now. And you have no objection to uh, standing down? No, I do not, Mr. Mayor. Kind of delighted, I think I can tell. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Mr. Barrett. <coughs> Council, shall I put to vote? All those in favor? Opposed to Finney? Thank you, Councillor Duddick. That brings us to item number four, the Lakeshore Road Reconstruction and Streetscape Project, Streetscape Furniture Selections. And uh, I see some devoted fans of this process in the audience. So, uh, Mr. Cozy. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of Council. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Paul Allen, our Manager of Design and Construction. And he's uh, going to walk us through a presentation outlining the report. And uh, happy to answer your questions once he's done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to uh, go back to the um, July 2016 Council direction to start my presentation. At the uh, July 25th meeting uh, in 2016, Council um, provided the following direction to staff. Um, the main um, recommendation applies to our tonight's report is to uh, for staff to relaunch the public engagement process um, for the downtown streetscape furniture. Um, looking at the um, general themes um, related to the benches, bike, bike rings, and bollards. And uh, the three themes that we looked at were traditional, classical, and contemporary. Um, the recommendation also approved the use of granite pavers and curbs and uh, approved the, the proposed waste receptacles. Um, the third uh, part of the recommendation was for staff to look at options for a flexible or curbless street and finally to report back in early 2017, which we're doing tonight. Phase one of the uh, public um, engagement started in September um, of 2016. And again, that was to look at the three themes for the downtown streetscape furniture. Um, the first part of the consultation included an online survey that ran from September 8th to September 23rd. We also, also ran a number of information booths in the community throughout the uh, month of September, primarily on the weekends, trying to solicit some more feedback from the public. We held our main public information center at Town Hall on September 20th. And we also had a, no, um, a number of communications with the downtown BAA, resident associations, uh, newspaper advertisements, and uh, electronic communications. As part of phase one, we received feedback from over 1,400 stakeholders. There was very strong support for the traditional theme from both the in-person and online feedback. The downtown BAA also undertook their own internal survey, and their members um, also indicated a strong um, recommendation towards the tr traditional theme. In October, staff pre um, prepared a report to the Planning and Development Council recommending the traditional theme, which was, a was approved by this council. Um, following that, staff also took an information report to the Heritage Committee, updating them on the traditional theme. So phase two uh, of the public engagement was to actually select the traditional streetscape furniture. And uh, so we went, went out to the public to get feedback on a number of items, including benches, bike rings, bollards, streetlight poles and, and fixtures. Um, we also asked for input on the color preference for the street furniture. 
Um, we asked for feedback on the bridge railing for the, the uh, rehabilitated Lake Shore Bridge. And finally, we asked for feedback on the street light color in the downtown, um, which I'll speak to more in detail later on, uh, referred to as 3,000 Kelvin and 4,000 Kelvin LED street, street light fixtures. The phase two public consultation also included an online survey with a photo library that the residents could go on and uh, take a look at the pictures and provide their feedback. That ran from November 28th to December 23rd. We uh, set up samples of the materials in downtown Oakville within the town square. Um, that included um, placing the bench options, the bike ring options, and the bollard options. So the public could actually go out and touch and feel and try out the benches um, in the downtown environment. So we had those set up from December 5th to December 23rd. Our public information center was held at Town Hall on December 8th. And again, we, we had uh, quite extensive communication uh, through uh, electronic media to the various, uh, to the downtown BA and resident associations. I'd like to walk through the results um, that we received for the various items that we asked for feedback on, starting with the, the benches. Um, we provided uh, two traditional bench options for the public to give us feedback on. Um, for the benches, we received 597 responses. The uh, bench at the top of the screen, the Maglin MLB310, um, received the most support at 63.5% uh, favorable from the responses. Um, the next shows the two uh, traditional bike ring options that uh, we asked for input on. Um, we received 589 responses. The um, Maglin MRB200, again, was a strong support at 77% su support. The uh, two bollard options that we um, asked for feedback on um, were fairly close in the response. The Maglin MTB100 uh, was slightly favored at 51.2%. We um, gave two options for the, st um, the street light poles. Um, the first option um, is an acorn style pole that matches the existing poles in, in downtown Oakville. Um, the second option is a pendant style roadway uh, light with had both a roadway and a pedestrian light. Um, we had very strong support uh, for the existing um, poles uh, at 72.6%. Uh, We also asked for feedback on the color of the furniture that the, uh, the public would prefer. Um, we gave them two traditional options. The first is a graphite black, which is a very standard type of uh, traditional streetscape color for uh, d different downtowns around Ontario. Um, the second was the existing color of the existing streetlight poles, which is called uh, moss green. Um, and we also asked if they had no preference um, at all. So they came back with a very strong support for graphite black. Um, we also wanted to ask for feedback on the bridge railing uh, for the Lakeshore Road Bridge that we're currently um, uh, reconstructing right now. We uh, supplied three options. Um, the option at the top is a uh, traditional looking railing that has been used in the City of Toronto. Um, the other two options are um, options that are currently um, existing in Oakville. The, uh, so option three um, received the most support at 63.1%. Um, uh, the the uh, the railing at the top. I should mention that uh, we did receive some feedback on the height of the railing. The existing railing on Lakeshore Road Bridge is 1.1 meters high. The proposed railing for the rehabilitated bridge will be 1.37 meters high, so an additional 0.27 meters, just less than, less than a foot. Um, that standard meets the uh, current Canadian Bridge Code for uh, a railing height that uh, is meant for pedestrians and cyclists. Um, we, we did receive about a handful of um, comments that they, they didn't like the, uh, the higher railing. Um, staff support the 1.37 meter height. Um, that recommendation is coming from our design consultants. We feel that it provides the maximum safety for, for all users, including pedestrians and cyclists. We um, also um, did receive some feedback on the, the streetlight color. Our, the town's current standard for uh, LED streetlights is 4,000 Kelvin. Um, it is more of a, a whiter light that uh, I guess is supposed to meant to mimic the color of moonlight. 
Um, a number of residents um, said they support, they would like a, a softer, a more yellow type of light, which would re be reflective in the 3000 Kelvin um, value. Uh, so in response to that feedback, staff set up a pilot project on Lakeshore Road uh, between Navy Street and Thomas Street. On one side of the street, we retrofitted the street with uh, 3,000 Kelvin street lights, and the other side, we retrofitted with 4,000. Um, I think this, if I remember correctly, the south side was 3,000 Kelvin, and the north, north side was 4,000 Kelvin. Um, so, so we wanted people to actually have the ability to go out and take a look at it uh, in the downtown environment and see which type of uh, light they really preferred. Um, the responses came back with 49.1% uh, support for the 3,000 Kelvin, which again is the softer, more yellow type of light. Um, we also so we had 15.1% 15, 15 support for the 4,000 Kelvin, and 35.8% uh, had no preference um, in the color. So based on this feedback, we're uh, proposing to um, implement the 3,000 Kelvin streetlight standard um, on the decorative poles as part of the Lakeshore Road project. Um, also the balance of the decorative streetlight poles in downtown uh, would be retrofitted with the 3000 Kelvin fixtures as part of the town's <coughs> LED streetlight conversion program. In addition, we're recommending that the 3000 Kelvin um, fixtures be used on existing decorative streetlight poles within the, on Kerr Street within the Kerr Village and also on um, Lakeshore Road and Bronner Road within the Bronche Road Village. Um, the main um, reason for this recommendation is to provide a, a consistent um, light color in our um, uh, traditional downtown environments with our decorative street lights. I also wanted to mention that staff took a report and presentation to Heritage Oakland Advisory Committee on January 31st recommending uh, with recommendations of support for the streetscape furniture furnishing as part of their heritage permit um, so the advisory committee did approve um, the report and the meeting minutes are attached to the agenda just to finish off my presentation i want to quickly talk about next steps um, so upon council's approval of this report the selections um, would be um, immediately incorporated into the construction of the lakeshore road bridge um, namely the, the railing and the streetlight poles. Um, so um, we are waiting for that uh, confirmation so that we can clarify with our contractor um, which materials will be used in the bridge. Um, the selections will also be used as part of the detailed design for the rest of Lakeshore Road from Navy Street to Allen Street. And finally, the recommendations would be incorporated into the downtown transportation study master plan and used on other roads that are reconstructed in the future in the downtown. With regards to the overall project uh, next steps, um, as you all know, the Lakeshore Road Bridge um, has recently started construction, and that will continue on until December 2017. The uh, detailed design of Lakeshore Road between Navy and Allen will continue um, for the remainder of 2017. Within that design process, we'll also be looking at uh, flexible street options with separate, um, through a separate public engagement process. We'll also be doing a cost-benefit analysis um, of using the exist reusing the existing streetlight poles in the downtown or replacing them with new poles. I should, I should men mention that we will have to um, buy new poles even if we reuse them because based on the newer light standards, we'll need more poles and we'll need new poles for the bridge. Um, but that exercise will be done um, as part of the design process. We'll also be looking at uh, developing our construction mitigation strategy um, which will be very important to the downtown businesses um, as we move into construction. And so these above items, will, we will report back to Council and on, on these items later in 2017. Um, with regards to the construction of Lakeshore Road, it's currently scheduled for construction uh, over two years, 2019 and 2020. And the other item um, is the conversion of the uh, existing one-way streets to two-way streets. That work will be completed uh, next year in 2018. So that completes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hutchins. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the Heritage Committee, which I was sitting on, was very, very, very impressed with the, all the uh, um, long and arduous uh, public consultations that you did, and you did a very good job. 
I just wanted uh, one comment on the uh, flexible and curbless streets uh, to make it clear to the public at large. That is coming back to council that's not being passed at the moment. Uh, when will that be back? Um, through Mr. Through, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, our, our, our public uh, engagement process is planned for the spring of this year. Um, I probably would anticipate us coming back probably um, early fall, September, with the, with the staff report. Okay, thank you very much, and I'd like to move this when this comes. Thank you, Councillor Hutchins, for your motion. Councillor Romero, you have questions? I do, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, uh, just with regards to um, changing the LEDs in the Brawny Village and in the Kershaw Village, uh, the Village is there infrastructure that needs to change on the poles or is it literally just the top that gets mounted onto the poles or does the wiring, does the infrastructure inside the poles need to change as well? Uh, through, through Mr. Mayor, no, it is basically just retrofitting the existing um, lighting fixture. So the, all the, the wiring, everything inside the poles it remains. So that, so the, so the pole and the wiring inside the pole won't be touched. It will just be taking the head off and putting a new LED head on. So the, the hardware is all, all, all there. That's correct. Okay. Um, I guess my question then would be um, to staff. Um, and and uh, Enrico, I know I know you know this. The the Brawny um, village, uh, the poles are are in a horrendous state. The GFIs don't work. The lights go on and off. Uh, is there any added value into looking at how while we're doing this, we can try and just fix those poles and and make it so that <laughs> they work? It's been about four years or five years now. We've been arguing about this uh, about getting the poles fixed. Is it something we can look at at the same time, or is this a whole different issue that uh, that would not be the right time to look at this? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, uh, we have uh, considered uh, reviewing uh, the GFI fixtures at this time. However, it would impact our our schedule for the LED con conversion. So it is something that uh, we think is best ha uh, handled separately. Uh, okay. Well, we'll probably revisit that. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Gidding. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, and thanks and heartfelt appreciation. It's been quite a process that you've gone through on this. Having been, uh, I think I attended all of the sessions, the public sessions, and you were in the north and the south and the east and the west and at farmer's markets, and uh, a delightful way of interacting with the public and visitors and uh, letting them look at the project. So full marks on that one. Uh, the results were very clear. Uh, when they came back. And just out of curiosity, those numbers don't include the BIA poll that they did of their members, does it? Uh, through Mr. Murray, um yes, they do include their results. We did include them in the num overall numbers. So that's the, uh, of the 1,221 that came in, the BIA is included fully in that? That's correct. Excellent. And the uh, further to Councillor Ramirez's question, the next step is to look at the feasibility of whether you source new ones that match as close as possible or rebuild the existing. And could that possibly help uh, the Bronte as well? At that point, we'll know the cost of, of rebuilding them. Through you, Mr. Murray. Certainly that information will be very helpful uh, looking at other areas. I'd like to add, I, I I think they're really two separate issues because what we're talking about in the downtown is a complete refurbishment of an existing aluminum pole. Um, whereas I think what, what uh, Councillor Ramira and Enrico were discussing a minute ago was uh, really just updating the pole itself and some of the features within the pole. Oh, fair enough. Okay. All right, thanks. And uh, thank you for having the 3,000 and 4,000 K lights on the north and south side. Uh, I was getting calls from people on their cell phones registering their votes, not while they were driving. Uh, they, were, they were pulling over. So it was a great way of allowing them to have a look. Thanks. Are there any members of the public with information for council on this file? We're just happy witnesses. Well then. Councillor Hutchins has uh, moved the recommendation as printed in the agenda. Shall I put the vote? All in favor? Opposed if any? There you go. Carried. And not a crossword among us.
Uh, we have no confidential discussion items, but we do have the advisory committee minutes that you've received in the addendum for the Oakville uh, uh, Heritage Advisory Committee. And the recommendation is just to receive those minutes. Councillor Duddock moves receipt. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, carried. And then you also have minutes to receive from the Livable Oakville Official Plan Review Council Subcommittee. Councillor Hutchins moves. All those in favor? And that is carried. Um, could we have a motion to rise and report? Councillor Duddock, thank you. All in favor? That's carried. Um, I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on public hearings items 1 and 2, discussion items 3 and 4, and advisory committee minutes items 5 and 6 as noted by the clerk. A mover and seconder for my report would be in order. Councillor Elgar and Councillor Grant, all those in favor? Opposed, if any. The report is adopted. Council, is there any new business of an emergency congratulatory or condolence nature? Thank you. I wonder if we could look for a mover and seconder of the bylaws. Councillor O'Meara, Councillor Knoll, all those in favor? And the bylaws as printed in the agenda are carried. And that completes our agenda. It's been terrific working with you, and we are adjourned.